Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Manning. I'm going to be working with you on lesson three, where we read chapter three of The Road to Freedom. So for our chapter today, we're learning how to explain how a series of scenes fit together to provide the overall structure of a text, which is basically saying we're going to try to figure out the text structure of our story. And you can focus on the text structure this text structure of a an entire story, or you can focus on the text structure of just a chapter. Um, today, we're just focusing on this particular chapter. So first, we have to identify what type of structure it is. Are they telling the story in chronological order, which is also known as sequential? Are they telling it in cause and effect? Here's a problem, then there this happened, then this happened, and then this happened. Or is it a problem solution? Here's a problem, here's how the character solved it. Um, and we can use smaller sections of the text like this chapter um, or scenes um, to provide uh, what the overall text structure is. So here's some typical text structures. Here's sequence. This would be like first this, then this happened. Um, and it just happens like I would imagine like a timeline. Um, you might hear the major event and then another major event in the life. Uh, typically, a lot of stories are, are told in sequential order. Uh, you wouldn't have a lot of flashbacks if the story is being told in sequential order. Then we have the problem solution where we start with a problem and then that causes an event and another event and another event and then you end up in a solution. You can also have one where you're comparing how things are the same or how they're different. That might mean that you have a chapter about one character from that character's point of view, and then you have another chapter about a different character's point of view, and you, as the reader, would be able to see how they were similar and how they were different, even if it's the same event. There's also a description where there's one thing and then you're given details about it, and there's cause and effect where something causes something else to happen. And there would be multiple causes in this versus the problem solution, you have one major problem. While we're reading today, a by the way word, BT dub word is possum. That's a gray and white mammal, meaning it gives birth to live babies, it has fur, and it's about the size of a small dog with a long tail and it helps it climb and grasp tree limbs. Uh, when dead, they often play dead or they lie still. So if you ever came across a possum, it may be running away and then all of a sudden just fall over and you think, oh my gosh, we just killed it. Or you might just find it and you think it's dead, but it's actually not. That's how they escape their predators. And um, they really creep me out. So that is a fun picture to have to stare at. So uh, while you're reading chapter three or while you're listening to me read chapter three, I want you to uh, think about what Emma and her mother could be thinking or are thinking as the rain begins to fall. I woke to the sound of dogs. Mama, wake up. I shook her and she jumped. We, she looked around scared. We had no time to run, so Mama quickly covered us with leaves. And then we curled up tight with our knees to our chest, trying to make ourselves small. Best as I could tell, the dogs were on the other side of the river. We curled closer, hoping the master and his catcher wouldn't come this way. The sun was bright above us, and without the night sounds, the crunching leaves and cracking twigs sounded louder. I wondered how long I had slept, wondered how long the dogs had been barking, and wondered if the dogs could still track us, even though we'd crossed the icy river. I'm sorry, Mama, I whispered, letting tears run down my cheeks. I tried to stay awake, but Mama just pulled me to her. The sound of men's voices and barking dogs got closer. I knew all about the catchers, how they searched for runaways and returned them back to plantations for money. I held my breath and lay as still as a possum, waiting. We waited until I didn't think I could lie still any longer. And then, bit by bit, the sound of men talking and dogs sniffing got softer and farther away. I opened my mouth to say something, but Mama covered it with her hand. We waited a little longer and de until we heard nothing but the screech of birds above us. Finally, Mama said, during the day, 
we gotta stay out of sight. But tonight, when it's dark, we make our way to the creek. My stomach grumbled and Mama handed me the last of the food. I shook my head no, but Mama pushed it into my hand. Eat, Emma. You're gonna need it, she said. I shoved every last bit in my mouth, hoping to stop the pain in my empty stomach. As soon as we got settled good, I heard thunder. All right, while reading chapter three, we have three vocabulary words. Uh, our first one is curled. So in the text, uh, we had no time to run, so Mama quickly covered us with leaves, and then we curled up tight with our knees to our chest, trying to make ourselves small. So you may look at that word, that word curled and think about curly, or you might think about curl. Um, all of those things may help you to figure out what the word means, but also in the text, it says that they had their knees to their chest. So that kind of gives you that visual representation of what uh, you might be feeling or, or what they might be looking like, I'm sorry, what they might be looking like while they are uh, curled up hiding from those catchers. Then we have the word screeched. Let me get rid of that, sorry. Then we have the word screeched or screech, I guess, um, right here. And it says, we waited a little longer until we heard nothing but the screech of birds above us. So when we see that word screech, um, you might think of maybe a screech owl. Or for me, when I look at that word, I would see that it's coming from a bird. So I would put myself into when I went to the Topeka Zoo and I go into the little aviary, the bird place that they have outside and think about how loud it is when I'm in there. So they're outside and they're trying to hide and it's super quiet and they like are trying to keep their mouths as quiet as possible. She'd opened her mouth and her mom covers it up, but they can hear something. And I just imagine how loud those birds might be sounding when you're trying to be so quiet. So screech is kind of like a scream or a cry, but usually the word screech we associate with birds. And then we have the word grumbled. So in this, we kind of have to be looking around at what's happening in the story. So finally, Mama said during the day, we got to get out of sight. But tonight, when it's dark, we will make our way to the creek. So they are trying to still being hidden. This is towards the end of the chapter. But her stomach grumbled and Mama handed her the last of the food. I shook my head no, but she pushed it into my hand. Eat, Emma, you're going to need it. So what I know is that her mom is trying to give her food and she's saying no, but her mom is putting it into her hands. So it has something to do and it's her stomach. So I always think about when my stomach, uh, when I'm hungry, it feels like my stomach is grumbling. Um, it's And in this case, we have the word grumble or complain, but it's almost like her stomach is complaining about the lack of food that it has. And her mama knows that. So she's trying to make her eat while they have time or while they're safe. So that way she has strength to keep running. All right, now that we've read chapter three, what story structure do you think the road to freedom is being told in? And you kind of have to know or use how you know it. So I would ask myself, um, is it being told in a specific order? I know at the beginning of the chapter, Emma wakes up to the sound of the uh, dog catchers. I know that in the middle of the chapter, they are hiding and waiting for the dogs and the, uh, I said dog catchers, I meant slave catchers, but the dogs and the slave catchers are trying to find them and they're just curling up in a ball, trying to stay put. And then at the end, the slave catchers have moved on, but they realize that they have to kind of stay put. So that does sound like the order in which things would happen. Um, in this chapter, there is, there is something that happens, but I wouldn't identify it as a problem right here. I, I think that we would have to have multiple events for this chapter to be problem and solution. You could say overall, the story might be problem and solution. The problem is they want to be free and hopefully we reach that solution at the end. But when we're talking about just this chapter, I don't think problem and solution fits. Comparing and contrasting, we would kind of have to have two different characters' point of views. And right now, the only person that we're hearing the story from, the only person's point of view, because I know her thoughts and feelings, is Emma. 
there's not um, a description of specific events or one big major event because we have multiple events throughout the chapters and um, there's just not enough details for this to be description. And cause and effect, um, we didn't have enough events in this chapter just like for description. We had one major event, the slave catchers. So in that case, the sequential order is what fits. Um, but also we are knowing the sequence of events from one character's point of view. So let's look at that. Um, so structuring the story from Emma's point of view, the writer was able to tell, was able to kind of put you in the character's shoes. So the way that I was reading this book is, or this chapter, was I was picturing her feeling while hiding from those slave catchers the same way that I would feel when I was playing hide and seek with my brothers when I was a kid. You would be hiding in a closet, hiding in a room, and you just get so scared and you're trying to calm your breathing. You're trying to be as quiet as possible, except for when I'm doing it, I'm playing. When Emma's doing it, it could mean that they get captured and separated, or it could mean that they get captured and killed. So it's, it's life or death in her instance. And in my instance, I still had all those feelings, but mine were excitement. So what words and phrases do we see in these two pages that kind of help you think about Emma's point of view, how Emma's feeling? I'm going to point out one that's pretty easy right here is that she had tears running down her cheeks. That one kind of is pretty simple for you to see. People can be crying for many reasons. They could be crying because they are laughing so hard, or they could be crying because they're scared, or they can cry because they're mad. It's up to you to kind of determine why she has tears running down her cheeks, but you can't just decide what it is. You have to have that text evidence that supports how you know she is upset or she is scared. So look through these two pages and try to find some more text evidence. All right, now with the same two pages, what do you, uh, crunching leaves and cracking twigs, sound of men's voices, dogs barking, dogs sniffing, and screech of birds all have in common. Those are all directly from the text. That's why I put the quotation marks marks around them, but what do those all have in common? What I notice is crunching leaves, cracking twigs. Well, those are all, those are things that happen outside, um, but I can also, when I read those words, I can imagine when I'm walking through my backyard and I'm crunching on the leaves or stepping on a twig. The sound of men's voices, dogs barking, dogs sniffing, I'm remembering that they're hiding and just like I kind of talked about hiding and playing hide and seek, um, everything as you try to get quiet and try to calm your breathing and you try to stay as quiet as possible, you realize how loud those other sounds are. And to add on to it, if you are hiding for your life, it adds on even more. All right, that is our lesson for today. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye, guys.